Okay, so anyone who's ever played with uh, TPA 3116 amplifiers, of which this is a very, very good implementation of, uh, will know that they have a pretty, pretty severe issue in that they have this uh, turn on thumb, which I shall be displaying uh, shortly. So these go up to 26.5 volts, I think they're nominally rated to. You can actually push it a bit harder but it really doesn't make any sense. So I'm actually having this set to uh, 26 volts and you saw that turn on. There's actually worse examples and I've actually limited the supply. This should be one amp or something. And um, yeah so this is a pretty big problem. If you have like six speakers connected to this you turn it on you'll have like I don't know shit six amps flowing through the chips right and through your speakers and it's just really not good and um, that's actually pretty bad because TI uh, I think Texas Instruments does this yeah so TI actually does not acknowledge this at all whatsoever so their uh, demo schematic their their typical implementation is exactly like this uh, Yuan Jing board so this is again very good the, the one problem it had uh, these inductors were quite uh, loosely connected to the board, right? And if you would have it in something where any vibration could occur, they would definitely snap off. So I just added a bit of silicone, and now they're very firmly in there. Anyway, and I fucked up the Bluetooth uh, trying to program it. Now it is a different one. I programmed it, pulled off some traces, so this is a bad story. But ignoring this side of the board... The rest is exactly, so the, the support circuitry around the, each of the amplifier chips is exactly like what TI recommended. And it still has the turn on thump, right? So, again, there might be subtle differences, but, but in any case, the design is very not robust uh, with respect to this turn on thump. For example, the TPA3110, which is way weaker than this one, doesn't have any thump. Right, that one you can turn on, off, on, off, on, off, exactly like this, and I have tried it, and it doesn't have any thump, and it turns on immediately. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, this is the fix. So basically two components. Um, so you'll want a capacitor. This is one microfarad. I actually pulled it off of another uh, amplifier, so it's, it's similar to these and a Schottky diode and it has to be a Schottky diode it can't be a normal silicon diode because these have a way way lower drop across them especially at the low voltages this operates at and I'm pretty sure this will drop more than 0.3 volts at the currents that we have here but anyway might even work without it but I really wouldn't recommend it because at shutdown you will be applying a negative voltage to the new pin which is not good because the most it's rated to is minus 0.3 volts. And it should be way more, especially if you're working with 26 volts anyway. There's, there's a pretty complex dynamic with the caps discharging at different rates and whatever. Anyway, two components, not that bad. So one diode, one capacitor. And uh, I've uh, gotten this from 360 Customs, so he has actually two designs. Uh, this is one of them, and he actually use the 750k resistor here which I would assume would be better because this would prolong I think the uh, the time it would take to unmute the to drain this capacitor to ground kind of to, to bring this to ground but these boards and most boards have actually a hundred K resistor here so you'll see the so 10 and four zeros so you have this 100k here so I'm just using that uh, basically tacking on the Schottky diode across it with it facing the mute pin and then simply this other wire of the capacitor I'm taking it from uh, from GVDD which is pin I think 6 and pin 6 is connected to pin 7 which is power limit so there's some shit going on there I didn't look into it so if we count We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six is this one, and seven is this one, which appears to be not connected, but it's actually connected to this one. 
So I'm taking a GVDD from here and this is like a, seven, a very, very weak 7 volt supply. Capacitor and then I'm taking it to mute. Right, which mute is, is this pin here, goes to the 100k resistor and then to ground. So this is ground here. And so let's uh, again look at the look at the thump with uh, on this chip, which does not have the 360 customs chip, um, circuitry. There's actually another one. There's a guy Giancarlo, and I think it's even referred to as the Giancarlo circuit. That actually uses the supply voltage, and that might be a bit better, but uh, yeah, it requires three parts, which again another resistor, and yeah, this is the most minimal one indeed. So let's turn it on again. All right. Okay, and um, let's now move over. Okay, so now we have the speaker connected to the uh, 360 Customs modded uh, amplifier. And check this out. Almost nothing. So way smoother, way slower. It's even might even be desirable. Let's turn the volume all the way on all the pots. Might even be desirable, right? Have a small thump, right? Just have the speakers wave a bit, right? Wouldn't actually be that bad, so really not much. And turn off seems to have no thump. Actually, the other Giancarlo circuit with the voltage from the main rail, he did say that there's some uh, turn off thump, but in this case, there doesn't seem to be any. So let's do that one more time. That's it's really subtle. And you'll see a little jump, but that is because the Bluetooth chip is connecting some stuff around, so that's. That has nothing to do with the turn on thumb. Alright, so hope this uh, helped you guys out because it sure has helped me out. And uh, yeah, thank 360 Customs as well and have a good one.